Well, welcome to uh, NAB 2018. We're here at the Adobe booth and we're showing off the uh, new features here in Adobe Premiere. So I'm going to jump into my color workspace, which exposes a Lumetri color panel. And we're able to implement a new view called Comparison View. In Comparison View, I'm able to look at a before and after representation of uh, the clip that's selected in the timeline. Um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and go to my basic correction and apply a LUT. And we can see immediately the difference between the unaffected and the affected clip in the timeline. And if I want to flip the orientation of this, I can use this button to switch my before and after in case I want one on one side other than the other. And the Lumetri scopes, as you can also see, are representing the, the before and after. Uh, there's two more views. One is uh, vertical split and horizontal split, where I can move the split where I want in, tor in order to look at the difference between the before and after. So I'm going to move this back to the side-by-side -side view again. And now I'm going to show you uh, the shot or frame comparison view. This will give you an uh, opportunity to, to bring up a reference clip anywhere in the timeline in order to reference this. Say I have like a, a shot here that was balanced exactly the way I want all the rest of the cameras. As you can see in this timeline, the, there's a lot that are a little too warm, some that are too cool. And I want them all to match that one shot. So I'm going to work on this one first. And I want it to look like this shot over here. And I'm going to go to the next previous clip in order to find the clip I one, and that's that one right there. And you could also use a scrubber to find the clip in the timeline that you want, or use the time code hot text or next previous. And an easy way um, to organize yourself of graded shots versus ungraded shots would be maybe to move the graded ones to a certain uh, track and then enable targeting on the ones that you haven't graded so you can easily step to the different clips just a, as a time saver. So I'm going to go ahead and have this one selected. And this is my, my reference shot here. I'm going to bring down the color wheels. And by default, we have face detection on. So by using uh, Adobe Sensei uh, machine learning, we analyze if there's a face in the, in the shot. And if there is, we put an emphasis on the uh, color grading based on facial tonalities. I'm going to go ahead and apply the match. And it does a pretty good job of matching that, but we don't apply this effect and, and have it as a black box where you can't configure it afterwards. It basically applied those parameters to my color wheels so I can further change my grade here manually or with a nice uh, control surface like this from Tangent to uh, uh, you know finesse my grade a little bit. So it's quite easy now for me to step through my, my timeline and go ahead and color match all these shots very quickly. So now they all have a nice uniform look. So the voiceover in, the, in this timeline is really buried. It's very under-recorded. So I'm we'll going to shot comparison mode. We'll go ahead and select our audio. I'm going to go into our audio workspace, which brings up the essential sound panel. If I select all my voiceover and assign it to a, an audio type, I'm going to assign it to dialogue. And I know my dialogue's a little under-recorded, so I'm going to apply a dynamic effect and raise the dynamics of it. That's better. So I can, it's a little more intelligible. I can hear, I'm going to bump it up just a touch more. Okay, I'm happy with that level, but still being overpowered by the background music. So I'm going to back off here and assign my music to the music type. So now, this is something we had last year, but we were able to assign different selections in the timeline to a type. So now I can easily select my dialogue if I want, or I can select my music if I want. So our new feature is ducking. So we can auto-duck. 
by setting keyframes on the music to duck down when the voiceover is happening. And again, this is using uh, Adobe Sensei machine learning technology in order to analyze the audio and apply keyframes to the music track in order to duck underneath the voiceover. So I'm going to bring this to a, a higher amount than I normally would, just so you can, it's easy to see the keyframes and go ahead and generate keyframes. And as you can see here in the timeline, it's created these ramps in order to allow the, the music to be ducked down underneath the voiceover. But of course I took it a little too far. That was way too much of a reduction. So I'm gonna reduce this down to around 5 dB or so and apply generate keyframes. And you'll notice I didn't do an undo there. So it's not like generate keyframes undo. You can just up reapply the calculation and it'll do it again to the timeline in order to generate the keyframes. And if these fade up and down are a little too gradual for me, I like them to be a little bit more abrupt. I could back off on the, the, the fades to make it a shorter duration. And you can see that it changes the keyframes here. And again, these are just keyframes that are like created for you. you could, if I needed to you know, finesse this again and go deeper into the timeline and, and change my level, I certainly could. So we updated the layout here in the Essential Graphics panel where we can easily get to your templates and search on local template folder, your libraries, and also very easily get to stock. So to bring in stock motion graphic templates or stock footage. And uh, you can see the little dollar sign, those are the premium ones. And I could actually filter on premium to show all the premium motion graphic templates and also on the free, which is nice to be able to see which ones are free. And we also have a info button you can click on in order to bring that up in its own panel so you can see a little bit more information that the, the publisher gave you and you can hover scrub over the animation to see if it's what you're after and drag it into your timeline. If it works out, license it right there. So in this timeline we have I'll go into my browse, go to mine, I'll go to my favorites. We use this motion graphic template from After Effects and use it a number of different times in the timeline here. And as you'll see, we've now exposed position, scale, and rotation in, in Premiere from the motion graphic templates from After Effects. So this same one was used in the timeline numerous times, and you can see that the rotation is different from the first, second, and third motion graphic template. And I think I'll want to add another one here, so I'm going to go back and grab another one of these and drop it in the timeline. And go to edits. And I can certainly change uh, any of the, the title here, or now we've added the ability to do it directly in the program monitor. So I can go ahead and uh, customize that. Now let's say I'm all done with these uh, motion graphic templates, but uh, someone called for a change in the font. So uh, After Effects artist can change the font, generate a new motion graphic template. It shows up in my library, and all I need to do is option, drag, and it's going to ask me if I want to replace all the instances in the timeline. And of course I want to say yes, and so now you can see that there's a font change in each one of these. So we have a new timecode panel. Our old timecode panel was just timecode. It was whatever the t frame rate was in the, of the timeline, that was it. So now we have the ability to add as many of these lines as you want and choose whatever you want to display as far as the sequence, timecode, and absolute duration in, out, the, the name of the clip. We could target different tracks in the timeline in order to display, let's say, the timecode in the B camera, the track and change the format to a different frame rate. So say you want to understand what the audio is for a particular frame rate. And uh, this is now configurable so in a compact view and a full view. And you can totally scale this to horizontal orientation or vertical. And you were asking me about one of my favorite things that no one's talking about. Let's see, There's, we made a big improvement to uh, AAF export. So 
I go export AAF, we've added some new features here. If you choose the same sample rate and bits per sample as a source broadcast wave file and choose separate, we can now preserve the directory name of the source file. So that way if you are you're highly organized and have all your broadcast wave in particular folder structure on disk, when we export the AAF, everything gets put into an AAF media folder. Inside of that is the parent directory of all the source files. On top of that, what we wanted to do is pass through the original clip instead of re-rendering it, just copy it with the original metadata and the original file name. When we wanted to do that, we came across a little hurdle uh, and that is a lot of people are using multicam in order to synchronize their audio and their video in order to uh, work in the timeline and uh, not use that method of, of uh, merge clips, but they want to use multicam. So the problem with that was, is when you create a multicam clip with uh, audio only and video only, what happens is it's nested audio. So AAF in the past treated that as a nested element and it rendered whatever the mix down would be of that nested element. With this release, what we're doing is we're looking and seeing, oh, this is audio that belonged to a multicam clip. We're going to flatten that. So not only do you get the benefit of reaching back to the source audio, but we're not going to render it, we're actually copying it. So a typical feature length timeline that would normally take about 25 minutes to export an AAF because it's generating all new files, basically takes a minute or two because it's essentially copying the file and giving it a GUID, uh, a unique identifier as a name on disk. So when you go into Pro Tools, it, it's accessing a copy of the original broadcast wave with the metadata intact.